Uh, welcome to our extra vlog. Um, looking back a week on from the end of the seven in seven challenge. Uh, delighted to be joined by the other five members of the, the team. And we're going to look back over the last week, uh, some memories out there and, and reflect on uh, an incredible uh, occasion. We'll start off, as always, with Kevin Sinfield. Kev, um, a week on, can you believe uh, how what a difference the, the seven in seven challenge has made? No, I'm still pinching myself. I think um, it's not until probably we've, we've all finished and reflected a little bit and looked back and thought what a wonderful week and I know we discussed it during the week we knew it was going to be special but probably now when we sit here with that massive total um, some wonderful memories and some belly laughs all week that were brilliant so I don't think it could have gone any better um, we all really enjoyed it I think to see that fun ticking over to get the support we have to raise the awareness we have has been awesome and spoke to Rob a few times uh, via text and have you, I've said this about 50 times while we've been doing this about us all being bowled over, but he is absolutely made up and um, humbled by the full support that he has got, the family have got, the MND Association have got, and then that wider MND community have been wonderful. So we can't thank people enough. We've just been, like I said, after we finished, it's been the best week in my life. So um, it's been brilliant. And in terms of the amount raised, obviously midweek there, we, we went through two and a half million pounds and it still continues to rise. Yeah, it's uh, it's mind-blowing. It's, you know, to, to think sort of last Tuesday morning when we set out, we were uh, sat on about 40 grand and hoping and wishing that we'd, we'd get to our target and then it just took off. And I think since we finished, none of us can actually believe what has happened, we can't believe, you know, to hit two and a half million is, is just unbelievable. I think, you know, when, when it went to, to all the seven, 777,777, we were all like, wow. Then we get the million and it, and it just, um, the support has been incredible. The generosity has been incredible. Um, we can't thank people enough. You're going to make a huge difference. And just before we get to, to meet the team, do a bit of an introduction. We did it early, early in one of the vlogs, but just to remind everyone who, who, who's, who your team was. Yeah, uh, brilliant team. Um, I don't think we could have picked a better group. I also think, um, well, I do know that I wouldn't have got through the week without all of them. They all played the part. They all were fantastic and um, it was a brilliant team effort. So if we so go through, we'll start with you, Phil, Phil Daly, who um, obviously has looked after all our media. Um, the way the BBC have supported this, but all other media outlets have been so supportive and giving, and um, you've just let everybody know and fed stuff out and driven this from behind. And that absolutely made sure that everybody were aware of this in the UK, certainly within rugby league, but in the UK, um, you know, your commitment to getting up that early every morning and getting here and getting all the footage and just pushing and all the logistics behind the scenes has been wonderful. So um, I have no doubt without you being involved, we wouldn't have got anywhere near this target just because of all the work you've done behind the scenes. It's been incredible. So um, I can only thank you. Um, our two runners, Chris and Dave. I'll start with Chris first. Chris Stevenson, it's Chris's fault that I started running. So is so I'm going to blame you for all this, Chris. It's your fault, all right? It's your fault we've raised two and a half million quid. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, Chris, Chris got me running. Uh, we first met. Chris was at Canterbury. Um, it was the CEO there, and I was still playing. And um, we set off on a, a really good friendship, and you know we've been good mates now for the best part of 10 years. And, and I've run most of my marathons with Chris. Um, and when we first... I first mentioned this to him um, straight away. He said, I'm in. Um, and he's been wonderful. He's been, you know, for him to do what he did running wise, I think he's incredible. I'm not going to tell you his age because he, he'll be, get embarrassed, but for him to do what he's done, he's, he's been wonderful and he's been a, a true mate for all of us. I know some of you didn't know him when he first, first set foot with us last Tuesday, but I think there's some friendships here that will last another lifetime. So, um, I hope he's enjoyed it, but he's been wonderful. 
your support all the way through it. It's been incredible and uh, we can't thank you enough, Chris. Uh, Dave, Dave Spencer, who and another real good mate, um, got to know Dave since play, finishing playing, really. Um, we got thrown together on a, on, um, a family holiday. Um, our wives know each other pretty well and, and me and Dave were uh, in Mexico together and um, set off a really good friendship, both very similar in personality, both like training, both uh, enjoy laughing at each other. So Dave remarkably ran his first marathon this year. And um, when I mentioned this, I was thinking of doing it straight away, said, can I join you? So absolutely, and, and he's been wonderful. He's been um, mega prepared, but right at the last hurdle, hurt his calf. Um, and for most people that would have meant you're out and you don't play a part in it, but he remarkably got up every morning and walked a marathon from 4 a.m. Um, on his own, in the cold, in the dark, and completed them all within seven hours. He did run the last day, which was brilliant because it meant we were all together to finish. But I just think it's incredible what he did to stick at it, to show perseverance, to not let his injury get the better of him and find a different way of, of getting through this has been brilliant. So I can't, another one, Dave, I can't thank you enough. I just think um, you've been wonderful and your support on, you know, on text when we've seen every morning and, met and got together for breakfast and we've all finished. Just think the swapping stories and, uh, but I have to say to do what you did on your own for the vast majority of it, massive respects because um, I don't think there's many people that could do it. I don't think there's many that I'd have the drive to do it, especially within seven hours. So that's off to you. Um, to our bikers, uh, our father Christmas bikers on the last day. Um, I'll start with Phil, Phil Allingan. Um, I didn't know Phil that well. Um, I've been in his company a couple of times, but I didn't know him that well until um, we got going last week. But I felt like I've known you years now, Phil. Um, you've been absolutely wonderful all week. Um, I just think your commitment to it, your dedication to all of us throughout the week to support, to know what buttons to press, to sing when we needed you to sing, your daily joke. Um, I can tell you now you've got, I know you knew Dave pretty well, but you've got four new mates that you'll have for the rest of your life. So um, you've been brilliant. You've been awesome with it. And last one's Big D, Daryl, Daryl Rogers, who's, you know, I've been mates with Daryl for a long, long time. Um, so everything I've done solo uh, this year and last year, Daryl's been there by my side. You know, he's, he's been my wingman. We have a bit of a joke about it. But he's there. He knows what I need, drinks-wise, gel-wise. He knows what buttons to press on me. He knows when I need a kick up the backside. He knows when I need reining in. Um, he's funny. Uh, he does a great Elvis impersonation, as we've all heard this week. Uh huh. But he's just been um, a true mate been a true mate and um, he's been the, the art and soul of the group um, kept us together, kept us all upbeat, kept us all positive kept us all together um, can't thank you enough Daz, you've been absolutely brilliant and um, yeah, I'll do out for you pal so just to all five of you you know, publicly um, I've said a number of times on our group how special the week we're going to be but I hope you feel the same as I do but um, if there's anything you ever need from me, I'll always be there for you. I think you're doing a Salon Nugent, aren't you? are going to cry, aren't you? You know what no. I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> be striking in a minute. No, but nice words, Kev. Okay, very nice. Thank you. If we, Thank you. we use that order that, that Kev gave there, uh, Chris, we'll start with you first of all. Uh, what, I suppose, before going into it, what were you expecting? And then, then when you reflect on it now, how, how do you reflect on it? Well, I think I'll echo Kevin's thoughts there. It was a kind of honour and privilege to be part of what's been really special. Um, I've made friends that I know I'll stay with for life. Um, what I was anticipating before I went into it, I thought it'd be hard, and it was. Um, really struggled day four, and I couldn't thank Daryl enough for getting me around. Went out for a little run this morning and realised I need a new pair of trainers. I don't know how I, I ran around those marathons in those trainers, they were an absolute disgrace. So uh, <laughs> enjoyed every single minute of it. And to Kevin's point again, if he asked me to do it next week, I'd do it again. Genuinely would do, because I think, you know, I've known you guys for just over a week and I feel like I've known you for a lifetime. And 
you know, I'd go to the end of the earth to do something like that again. So just really honoured to be part of it. And that fourth marathon, I've seen the, the footage at the end uh, and, and how you managed to, to finish that marathon is just in, incredible where you were sort of halfway around with, with the injury. So what, what we, what should, when your memories now, when you think back to, to getting up that hill up to the Farrows on, on that fourth day? Well, I, I actually thought I'd been shocked halfway around. My leg just wasn't moving whatsoever. And fortunately, again, Daryl um, just did a bit of deep massage, which was painful to start with. And then it got quite nice, quite enjoyed his time. <laughs> on the leg, so it was quite enjoyable. But then coming into the village, Phil had rode back to help me through. And I actually felt a million dollars that these two guys had done what they'd done to get me around. So there was nothing that was going to stop me getting up that hill to finish the marathon. Unfortunately, I got under four hours as well. So really pleased with that. And Dave, Kev mentioned your story there in terms of the injury and everything else. Uh, and you had you had uh, Kevin's son, Jack, with you on, on the Saturday as well for your walk. Uh, what, yeah. what kept you, what motivated you during those long hours walking in the dark, trying to get it, get it done? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really need much motivation in terms of, you know, I, I got injured just before it and it, 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 I allowed myself to feel sorry for myself for, for a few seconds and then realised why we were doing this. Um, I'd echo Kev's thoughts. It's, it's one of the best things I've ever done. It was the best week of my life. The team were, were brilliant. And I just felt like if I could get up, a, a, well, get setting off early, and I could send the guys a message just to kind of G them on and come on, let's, let's get at it. Walking around with Jack was brilliant. Um, he's, he's a great lad. Uh, he never moaned once. Uh, he never even thought about giving up. And, he, you know, he walked a marathon. Well, we ran some of it as well. So, yeah, these highlights from the week, it was, it was, just, it was just amazing. And how special was it for you to be able to, to run that last one as well? It, it, was, it was brilliant. Um, I, I couldn't have wished, you know, at, at the start of the week, I, I couldn't run across a crossing when, when cars were coming. Um, so to be able for it to loosen up, and to be able to run the last day was, was just incredible. And the banter from all the lads, uh, the guys on the bikes were just brilliant. Um, yeah, excellent. Fantastic. And Phil, uh, Kev mentioned there, you, you, you met a few times before beforehand, but what, what, were, you, uh, what were you anticipating from, from the week? Yeah, so certainly not what, uh, what it turned out to be, because um, it, it was David that asked me, David said to me one day, I'm doing uh, this uh, seven in seven marathons with, with Kev and I need somebody on, on the bike. So will you come with me on, on the bike? So straight away, I said, yeah, no problems. Thinking it'd be a few rides out and, uh, and that was it. And then uh, as we know, Dave, Dave got injured. Chris didn't have anybody um, on a bike with him. So I, that was a plan then that while Chris was running, I'd go on the bike. And, um, and like Kev said, on day one, we were on 40 grand and we sort of said, right, if we can get five grand a day over these next seven days, then we'll, we'll almost be there with another couple of grand. We'll, we'll hit the target. And I think an hour into the first run, we were at 100k, uh, 100,000 pounds. So it, it just, what an unbelievable week. Absolutely amazing. I know Kev's mentioned as well, but all, all you guys have taken, a, took a week off work to, to do this and to support it. It's, you know, the, the sacrifice you guys have done. I know you and Daryl, did a lot of graph beforehand, working out the routes, out on the bikes, and and seeing where Kev was going to be going. Yeah, yeah, we did. We, we went out a few times and um, tried to suss out the routes to make sure that there's not too many junctions and traffic lights, and the roads weren't too busy. So we sort of knocked a couple of routes on the head that we were planning on doing for, for that reason. Um, uh, and even during it, we had a couple planned that we then sort of said, "Well, no, we'll just revert back to the ones." Uh, around Saddleworth, which were the best ones in the end because you got more toots of the horns from people and clapping and people coming out of shops and going around the local villages. So it was, uh, it, everything just, just turned out great. And Daryl, you obviously known Kevin for, for a long time. Um, you know, he, he's praised the rest of the team and talked to her, but in terms of your admiration for Kevin, you know, you can't believe what he's managed to inspire out of all of us in, in the last week. No, he's, he's, he's amazing. I think, you know, every one of the team has, has played the part, like I said, but without Kevin, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have happened, would it? And, and, you know, my goal and, and the team was to get Kevin round because if it stopped, then what he would have stopped, no doubt about it. Um, he's an amazing bloke and he's just, the mental toughness is, is just unbelievable that he's got. Um, his drive and, and, and what he focused on, his preparation, everything. Um, 
and the sacrifices, you know, it's just, you know, if you think he's, he ran a few of them marathons home because obviously, you know, Dave had to uh, pull out for two, but came in and, uh, sorry, Dave, Dave uh, missed the marathon and obviously the last one he jumped in. Uh, Chris pulled out on the day four, uh, but completed, which was amazing. But, you know, I think with JP and uh, Jonesy and, and Luke, I think they lifted him on them, them days in Leeds because I thought they were the toughest days for me, even though, it, listen, I'm sat on a bike, but you, you don't know the routes. You know, our job is to... Uh, is to be the wingman and, and, and stop the traffic because if they stop running then they can't get going again so things like that were if you know if you know where you're going it's a lot easier um, but the awareness just of NMD now and, and, and where it's at and I thought there was two massive things it, not just in the country in the world that, that happened on, on the Tuesday morning when Kev were being interviewed on BBC it was a vaccine for COVID you know someone were going live after what he had a, had a chat with and I just thought bloody hell it's amazing isn't it you know that the money that were raised or, or that's gone. Like, so we thought 77,000 would be a push in this day and age with, you know, what's going on with COVID and, and Christmas. And to get two and a half million plus, it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Kev, just go back, you talk about the figure that's been raised, but there's, there's thousands more being raised, but by inspired, I pick out a few here. Sean Jones, good uh, friend and colleague of ours at the Rhino. She's done a 50 mile walk, 22 hours, raised over five grand. A young lad, Isaac Lawley, he's seven miles in seven days. He's raised over £2,000, 3,000% more than his, his original target. Uh, and there's a lad called Craig Forsyth, who used to play for York, who's, who's rowing solo across the Atlantic. Uh, he set out yesterday and um, uh, urged anyone to support him. Incredible effort by, by him. Uh, and our, our, our academy team, Rob's old academy team that he coached, they, they hiked up Scarfield Pike yesterday. And their target, they've, they've exceeded their target and raised over 2,000. There's stories like this throughout where people have been inspired and, and there's going to be a legacy from this 7 in 7 challenge. Yeah, I, it's wonderful. I just think the support we've had all week has been incredible. Um, and then you see some of the other events you've mentioned. Um, I know Sean and Craig have probably planned theirs anyway and we're going ahead. Um you know, Shan's done a wonderful job to do to do what she did over the last twenty four hours. Incredible. So, um, but all the the other bits and pieces, the seven in seven campaign. Now that the M and D Association have, have have sort of thrown out there and and asked people to to get involved in, I think is wonderful. And and for us to see other people, you know, starting to whether it's a bit of exercise, whether it's running, whether it's bike riding, whether it's rowing, whatever it is, if people are going to stay fit and healthy and raise some money for a wonderful charity um, it's absolutely brilliant and if, and if that's what the legacy from this is I think we're all absolutely delighted because there's one thing for sure that number seven is right in the middle of it and, and ultimately that's why we all set out in the first place with this one and, right. the, well, and the money's obviously fantastic but one of the things that we've talked about doing these vlogs where we've, we've spoken to the M&D community I've, I've made a note here uh, Stephen Naylor, Danny Horn, John Meehan, Tracy Sanderson, Eric and Michaela Frank, uh, Georgina Gray, Philip Rushton all gave up their time to, to tell us their stories. And I had a, a, a lovely meeting with a, with a lady um, when, at, the, at the junction going up to Delft on, on your run there, just as we were heading towards a, a million pound who stopped me. And she just said she'd had three family members who, who'd been in, affected by MND. And she just was just thanked us for talking about MND and, and putting it out there and it was, it was a pretty emotional time anyway, because I knew we were getting towards a million. Uh, and just speaking to this, this wonderful woman and, and her, her praise, uh, I don't mind admitting that when I got back in the car there, I had to have a little bit of a moment just to, to pull myself together because we, we had still got a long way to go. But it's great that the M&D community are feeling that, they're, um, that their voice is being heard. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, that's the bit we, you know, we never planned for. It happened. It just happened and people jumped on board. And when you talk about emotional there, I think we were all at different times throughout the week. You know, there were several times each day that I, I would choke, I could feel my eyes full. Uh, and I know all the other guys were the same because it, it was just incredible what, what we were seeing and what we were feeling. Um, I don't think there's a better feeling than helping people, is there? And, and to know that we'll, this money is going to make such a difference. I think being on the, the sort of the calls throughout the week, and meeting different people and understanding the reasons why they were involved in MND or why their family had been challenged or how their family had been effective, affected by it um, was really important as well because give me a real insight of how these funds could and hopefully will help. 
Um, the support that these families need is it just isn't out there at the minute. And the MND Association have done a wonderful job, but they just need some more funds to be able to to support families properly. And then also the research, um, there's so little money spent on research in the UK and, and that's got to improve. If we're going to get rid of this cruel disease, we're going to need money to do it. And I think as, we, as we've seen, Daryl mentioned it, as we've seen over the last three or four months, if you throw enough money at something, you're going to get some answers as we have done with COVID. And we need to throw some money at MND research. We need to get a cure because this is the cruelest of cruel diseases. And, and what I've seen firsthand with Rob over the last 11 months, but obviously listening to a lot of people's stories on it, it absolutely ravages families. Yeah. And we got to help them. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, you know, for, for those who are wondering about the, the funds and everything, um, in terms of in terms of the MND Association, they've been they've been bowled over it. I know uh, Kev and myself had a conversation with uh, right up to Sally Light, who's the chief executive of the MND Association, and you know there are plans in place that every every penny every penny that was has been donated um, will, will go to to support either Rob or to the MND Association. Uh, and do and do so much good. I spoke there briefly about one of one of the highlights of mine. We'll go, we'll go for each of you just to uh, maybe pick out a, a moment that uh, was a highlight for yourself. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll start with with Chris. Um, can, you, can you pick out a, a moment that you you um, thought um, will stick with you? Just one. I mean, the, the whole week was a highlight. So I'm going to um, change it up and have two. So we may be here a bit longer. Um, I think the, the first one was when that woman rugby tackled me when she was trying to get a photograph of Kev on day two, I think that was. Totally took me down and I bruise easily. I'm not a rugby player. And then the, the, the second one was seeing Phil's bike coming into um, the village after day four and having limped around most of the course. As Phil said, he was my wingman for most of the week. And just to see his face on his bike um, ready for the next joke just got me through the last little bit of it. So the whole week was amazing, but I'd put those two down. Dave? Yeah, I'd echo Chris's thoughts that the whole week was was amazing. Um, the, the highlight, there's so many highlights. I, again, I'd, I'll go with two of you a little bit greedy. One was just the generosity of, of people as we were going around, tooting horns, um, you know, local coffee shops, giving me coffee as I walked past. It was, it was incredible. And, and then the other one was when every time I saw the lads and they were kind of running past me and just high-fiving them. And that was just, it was just brilliant to see that they were, they were batting on and it, it was good to see them. Phil? Uh, well, if everybody's having two, then I'll have two as well. But there is, I could probably pick about 20 out if I wanted to. But I think the first one was when uh, we were in Leeds and, and if, as we already said, a few days before we were a bit worried we were going to get to 70 grand and we were going through the city centre. I think you, Phil, shouted out that we'd hit that half million mark um, and then literally 50, we went round the corner and 50 yards up the road was uh, Rob uh, sat there in front of the mural that they'd done in Leeds for him with his wife and kids and, and his mum and dad. So, and we weren't expecting, we, we knew that Rob was going to be there at the end. Um, but we didn't know he was going to be there halfway around. So I think that was uh, one of the many um, emotional moments there. And then another one, I think running up the final straight on the last day where we were all together and for all of us, everybody, the, well, the runners, uh, more than me and Daryl on the bikes, to, to get through that last day without an injury or an incident and to all finish together at the end was, uh, was uh, quite remarkable, really. Daryl? Yeah, obviously they've touched on a lot there. I think every day you could you could pick some it with that, you know, ups and downs throughout the day, throughout the week. Um there's probably one that I can't say, but Kev knows um that, that happened that was funny, but it's not for not for T V or talking, but it was a good one. Um I think uh yeah, seeing Rob was a massive thing because that's what we're doing it for. You know, we we did a we did a, a word of the day, didn't we? Just said things and one of the things was a reason and what was a reason and and that was that was it. It was, you know, I didn't expect it this big. I think, for me, I think going down uh, on day four. I think for me because um, I was talking to Kevin going down past him. Going, it, I think it was one of uh, going in once. You know, we had to go around again, and, and obviously Chris had uh, pulled his car, 
and I just looked at Kev. I said, I think he's walking. I said, I'll, I, I'm Dave's going to get him some. Uh, yeah, Phil's going to get him some uh, ibuprofen, I think, or something. I said, are you good? He said, I'm, I'm good. I said, are you sure? I goes, yeah. I said, I'm going to get him round. So I went back, uh, obviously, get a, had a bit of a pep talk with him, cheered him up, give him a bit of a rub. And I said, listen, I'm going to finish this no matter what. Um, I think that was an, an highlight because if he wouldn't have finished out that day, I think it would have been, it would have absolutely destroyed him. And, and he did. And it didn't only finish at the end. He had a sprint, which I just, <laughs> I find it pretty, pretty amazing, really, that I said a few things to him and that was it. He'd gone like a bullet, you know, a bull in a shop. He'd just gone. Um, and, and I think that was good. And obviously, the end was very emotional. And, you know, seeing Jane hugging, hugging Kevin, telling him she loves him. And it was just, it was just amazing, you know, and, and looking at Kev's and my dad's face, just thinking what they've done. And, and all family and friends, it was just a, amazing, you know. And the biggest thing, obviously, the money that, that's been raised, it's just, you can't say no, can you really? Jesus, Daryl, you've got me there. I know, sorry, lads, but <laughs> I, it gets me as well every time, but it is, isn't it? It's just... And Kev, uh, obviously, um, we, we launched the... The behind the scenes video that, that Ram Films did did a fantastic job and everyone was out to see just how, how how tough at times it was. I think the, I think the thing that amazed most people was the, the way you were encouraging people who got you know it was a big enough challenge itself to run seven miles in seven days. But you know with Jonesy and and JP and them just t- talking around and getting it, making sure everyone finished on that final day, ever ever the captain leading the way. Um, what what would be your highlights? Um, well. Listening to all the guys there uh, just brings back so many good good memories and good times. Um, I didn't I didn't think it'd actually be as enjoyable as it was, and, and I mean the actual runs. Sort of, we were out just under four hours every day, but in all of those runs, I had a proper belly laugh at different times, and that that was just the banter and the camaraderie. So being back in the team and and being part of that again was wonderful. Highlight was seeing Rob, without a shadow of a doubt, and I reckon that. So with that being the Saturday and it was day five, I got home that day and Jane said, you look absolutely shot, you look tired. And I reckon emotionally that took a lot out of all of us who were in Leeds that day because um, we knew we were so close. We knew we had to go back to Leeds for day six. We knew we were in touching distance, but um, absolutely seeing Rob just emotionally was was really tough, uh, but great in the same time. So... Seeing him was brilliant. Um, the guys have mentioned the finish, absolutely finished. To all finish together, to all be there right at the end, to know that we'd all put so much into a an action-packed week. Um, at different times, we'd all had our own little personal battles, whether it be in your head or with a part of your body that you needed to get right for the following day. And the support, BBC support, you know, Sally Nugent has been wonderful text messages off Doddy, text messages from all around sort of the UK and different sports have been wonderful. Um, and I think the thing that when I look back on now makes me the most proud is, as a six, we made a difference. And I, I don't think you can put a price on that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we'll just finish off, Kev, you you mentioned him there, and it being a highlight uh, seeing Rob. Saturday was a year, uh, an anniversary since he's since he got his diagnosis. Uh, next weekend will be a year since he, he went public, and and how brave he's been. And I think that's one of the things that's that's really resonated, and where we've had messages from um, in terms of uh, in terms of that how Rob's allowing the world to see the journey he's on has enabled the M and D community to to share their stories and. Yeah, it's it's fantastic that that him him and Lindsay have been able to do that, and and incredibly brave of them. Yeah, absolutely. Just been total inspiration for all of us. Um, as we've talked about numerous times, he was an absolute champion on the field. He was brilliant off the field. He was a great teammate, but he's an unbelievable friend. And to see how he's been willing to share in a really difficult twelve months for their family. And to, I think that has raised more awareness than anything that anybody has ever done in MND. Dodd has done a wonderful job, but I don't think anybody's let people get that up close and personal before. And Rob was prepared to do it to highlight what a cruel disease this is and incredibly brave, incredibly brave as a family. They've got three young kids. Um, it were beautiful children and um, no family should have to go through this. And... I think the awareness that has been raised 
because of Rob. The funds that have been raised because of Rob. Um, he should be immensely proud and so should the family of, of the challenge and the way he's fought for the last 12 months because um, he's been absolutely incredible and he's been so inspiring to um, everybody, but especially that MND community who a lot of them um, have been hidden away and been put in a too difficult to handle box. It's got to come out of that box now. People have got to start talking about it. People have got to start helping. And Rob's made it okay for people with MND um, to come together. And, and I think it's massively powerful what he's done. Absolutely. 100% agree on that. And I think it's great the way people have been able to embrace Rob's journey and, and the fundraising. And, you know, we talked about how on the, on the Just Giving site, people are, you know, even not sending Christmas cards this year and making a donation or, or because they're not going to see each other, the money they would have spent on, on presents they're putting in there and, and dedicating it to, to family members. And, you know, there'll be a family that, that's in all our thoughts this Christmas and it's Roblins and, and the kids and absolutely 100% agree yeah. on that. Um, Kev, we'll, we'll finish off with a couple of questions that we've had through on, on Twitter uh, on the hashtag run Phil, Kevin. Phil, Phil, firstly, we need your highlight. All oh, right, yeah. Well, I, I gave my was that that lady talking about the difference oh, right. we made, uh, okay. yeah. Um, and uh, and the finish line uh, was great. <laughs> my only fear on that, I, I mean, been at that junction. I mean, you you guys know it very well because it's around the corner from you all. And uh, uh, but having having been at that junction and seen it for a week and seen the speed that cars go up there, I just had this vision. I, people just seem to forget that there was traffic in the country and we just swarming on the road and I knew at that point I need to get Kevin to that car park so all these people don't get killed because they would just they just think forget what, what what happens on roads uh, especially around there so Kev we'll, we'll run through these these questions uh question from Claire Naylor who uh, became synonymous with a Jaffa cakes uh, how many Jaffa cakes do you eat in a week Kev normally none <laughs> Uh, next one from a man uh, we know now simply as Hagrid. Uh, where does your mental toughness come from, Kev? That's from Richard Stockdale. And a clue. Uh, I think it was really, really easy to draw on every ounce of drive and strength um, because of why we're doing it. And if you've got a reason for it, you, you can make it happen. And most mornings it were a case of Especially up until the last day, we you know it ended up being a bit of a running joke where we just say, "Let's just knock this one off." And we're right then. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just we just had to get it done, didn't we? There were there were no we we couldn't fail. We couldn't fail. We had to get it done. We had to do it. There were no alternative for us. We didn't want to give that money back. <laughs> uh, what was Kevin's meal once he'd finished the seven in seven? Hope he had a great big greasy burger or something. Yeah, I, I think for most people out there, he'd probably be a bit surprised, but um, that was pretty much what we ate most of the week because it was all about calories and trying to get enough energy in. Um, my diet was very, very poor for the week, if I'm honest. So um, they did, with, with the work we did with Leeds Beckett in particular, they did say by day four, five and six, you're going to struggle eating. So you just need to get the calories in in whatever way you want. So make sure it's food that you like. So, um, yeah, most of the week it was um, what you deem as fast food, really, which probably is not what people want to hear, but but it's the truth. Um, nutrition was so important for all of us. That first 30 minute window was was crucial. And, and MSC with the Regenerate Shake uh, were wonderful. Um, those who watched the 7 in 7 sort of film will realise how much the bacon and egg butties um, we talked about um, mid run, so extra um, salt, Kev. Extra salt, extra salt, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was nice to actually have some go back to my normal diet now. We're finished and get loads of fruit and veg and salad back in. So, um, there was plenty of burgers eaten during the week. And uh, just a final one from, from the MND Association, uh, not really a question, just a thank you from everyone at the MND Association on behalf of all families affected by motor neuron disease across the country. We hope you realise the difference you've made. That's a lovely note there from the MND Association. And 
I'm sure as we head towards Christmas, um, you know, we'll, we'll reflect and just on, on, on what's happened. And as Kev said all along, you know, we, we won't probably realise till after just how special this week was. And it, and it certainly was. Kev, final word with you? Yeah, just a huge thank you. Firstly, to, to you five. We, we just wouldn't have done it. If we hadn't had stuck as a team, um, if it hadn't have been this group of six, it would have been a very, very different week for all of us. I've no doubt the characters, the personalities, um, it worked. We, I thought we made a great team and I can only thank you for that. You've been all wonder, You've all been wonderful. Like I said, if you ever need anything from me, you know where I am. Um, hopefully this is the start of a yearly event. Chris, can I have some new trainers, please? <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> but, but I think that the last, the last one would be thank you to everybody who's donated. Thank you to everybody who's supported. Um, you're going to make a huge difference.